Hi, I'm Steve Dockery and welcome back to the Moot Workshop. Today, we're gonna to be working on something that's actually personal to me. This is a uh, Macintosh 512KE that I bought new back in 1987, uh, but it's been through quite a lot. Uh, if you turn this around, you can see there's no screen in there. It's been subject to a bunch of modifications, um, which have all been ripped out. And my hope is to put it back in working order. So that's what we're going to start doing today on the Moot Workshop. So let me explain what happened to this thing. Um, the 512KE was able to address um, a 800K floppy disk, which was a nice improvement over the 512 that was before it. Um, but it didn't have a hard drive, and it couldn't actually talk to an external hard drive, although in the ROMs, it had the capability of talking to a SCSI drive because it had the same ROMs as a Mac Plus. So there was an aftermarket update that you could put on the thing. It was an upgrade that snapped over the CPU chip that added a SCSI drive to it and the ability to add extra memory. So I got that and installed it. Um, two things about it, because it was snapped over the uh, CPU chip, it was subject to bad connections, and so occasionally you'd sit down to use the thing and you'd have to whack it to get it to work. Is that any way to compute? I don't think so, but these were, these were simpler days. Um, and then the other thing is that the way it came is it expected you to snake a ribbon cable out next to the battery door and hook it up to a hard drive outside. What I did is I actually took a hard drive and put Velcro on it, stuck it inside the case, cut a hole for a fan and a hole for an external SCSI port to come out. And I hooked all that up and I used it that way for a while. I got a 20 megabyte external hard drive. Anyway, time passes and I don't use it anymore. And I cannibalized the screen out of it to put into another computer and I ripped all the upgrades out and actually sold that upgrade that snapped onto the motherboard on eBay and so it's been sitting in this kind of sorry state all these years but since this was the first Mac I bought actually the first computer I ever bought with my own money I'd like to put it back in working order so we're gonna work on it see if we can piece it back together and bring it back to some kind of a more dignified state Okay, I'm going to start taking this thing apart. Um, I'm not going to go through all the details of taking it apart. I have another video for that. But I do want to show you one thing before I take it apart. Um, in here is the parameter RAM battery that keeps the settings when you're not using the computer. And it's the original battery. And so it's almost certainly dead as a doornail. But it's also corroded in there. You should never store the computers, especially not in a hot place, with a battery inside. And you can see the slot that I cut alongside the battery case to snake that uh, cable out of it. All right, so I am going to take this thing apart. And you'll see me in a couple of minutes after I have it basically disassembled. Okay, now that I've got it all apart, I'm going to wash the case parts uh, and also the chassis and blow some dust off of the boards and then we'll start putting it back together. Uh, I'm going to clean these things in the sink with regular old dish soap. Um, and your friend is the toothbrush, an old toothbrush for getting into nooks and crannies. So let's begin and we'll speed through this because this is not exactly exciting. Thank you. 
And there we are. Now we need to dry it all off. Uh, this sticky stuff here is from a copy holder that used to be stuck on the thing. I'm going to have to use Goo Gone to get rid of that. So now we need to dry it all off thoroughly. And I should mention that if you want a mug, they're available in our swag shop. Now we're going to reassemble it uh, back to a point where we can actually test it and see if we can fix it. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is put the chassis back on. And that's secured with a couple of these T15 screws here. Actually, three of them. And two more up here which are actually slightly shorter versions of them. Now, as you can see, I've gotten the picture tube back from the computer that it was donated to. Uh, this is, as far as I'm aware, the original picture tube that came with this thing. Uh, this side of the computer is where the analog board goes, so that's the direction that that wire points. And that's the side that the high voltage cable goes to, and it just drops right in there. And is secured with those same T15 screws, except uh, we don't put this corner one on yet because there's a ground wire that comes from the analog board that goes to that. Okay, let's put the analog back, board back. This has got the video circuitry, um, like the high voltage and everything, and it's the audio and the power supply, and it's all on this same board. And that fits into slots here on this side, and the little brightness knob goes down in the bottom there. Make sure that this stays on. This protects you from the high voltage. So if these have decayed, as these have, you probably want to put new pads on there. There's a there's a little aluminum piece that provides a good connection here. Two more little screws down here. That holds the analog board on. I'll stick that on better later. all this other stuff up. That's that wire that goes down to there. This plugs onto the back of the picture tube. So there's our last screw for the picture tube. This is that big 
high voltage wire, which should have gone around the other side. There we go. That has a clip that clips into a hole on the tube. Sometimes it helps to squeeze it with some pliers, but I managed to get it in there. We have a ground wire that hooks up here. And there's a big plug here that goes to the picture tube. The jack for that is hidden under here. All right, that's all the analog stuff hooked up. Let's put the floppy drive back in again. That's held in with four screws. And then the last thing is the logic board. And I want to make sure that I'm grounded to the case of this, to the chassis, I should say, to make sure if I have any static electricity on me, that it gets discharged to this metal and not into the logic board. Here's the logic board, which slides into some Lots here. And then once that's in place, we have cable for the floppy to hook up and the main cable going to the logic board from the analog board. And that is that. Now it's all back in one piece and it's ready for us to test it. Okay, here we go, the moment of truth. Let's turn it on. Ah, we got a startup beep, that's a good thing. And I heard a little sound from the floppy drive, so it's getting power. But we have Nothing on the screen. Nothing at all. Okay, so at this point we need to do some diagnostics. We don't know if the problem is that the video isn't working or if the logic board is messed up. We have no idea. We don't even know if maybe the picture tube is bad. Um, so we're going to have to do some testing, see what we can do.